um, lots to be thankful for. Big welcome to all of you. I invite you to send the blue friendship books down, put your name and other information there, and then send them back to the center if you would. Um, I would just like to, uh, uh, it's not necessarily introduce, but just to point out that uh, Rob and uh, Barney Martin are with us. They have, uh, how, how many years ago did you move to mm, mm, Alabama? Sorry. Six? Six years. Six years. So they're over here. And you may want to greet them. Jacob, tell us what's happened. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on this lovely, oh, there we go. Good morning. <laughs> That's good. Uh, just a couple of things going on that I want to highlight, and I'll be referencing your bulletin inserts. So if you'd like to turn to that page. Uh, the first of which is that we have our next moms group, which is this coming Tuesday, July 19th at 4 p.m. There's a little bit more information there, but if you're interested or if you want to know a little bit more about that, you can see either Karina Isley, she is amazing, she's in charge of that program, or you can see myself um, after service and we can give you a little bit more information about that. The fourth Thursday of every month, Mike Regeniter and I um, meet in my office. The next one's going to be July 28th, it'll be at 6.30, and we run a, a men's support group. And so there's a lot more information in our newsletter, we call it the Scribe. Um, but if you are someone who um, likes to connect, maybe have some conversations, um, come check us out. And if you're anything like me, and you're incredibly stubborn, and you think, you know, maybe I can figure this out on my own, or maybe if I go to a support group, that means that I'm weak, I can't handle my own stuff. I understand, we understand, we get it. But there is a lot of connection, a lot of conversation, and a lot of healing that comes out of that. So just come check us out. You can just say it's an experiment. If experiments blow up, you just say, well, that's what an experiment is, but you will not regret it. Come check us out Thursday, July 28th at 6.30. We're continuing on in our summer wiggle worship program. Uh, it's a new program. Uh, it's been an absolute blast. So if you have any kiddos aged three to seven, during my children's message, which will be in about five minutes. We'll ask them to come forward. They'll grab a carpet square and they'll sit here. We'll do a quick uh, children's message and then they'll go with me into the church in the Sunday school room and then they'll be returned back to their families probably right around communion time. Uh, we are looking for a couple more helpers and so maybe if you have a heart for ministry, a heart for children's ministry, have a background in teaching or you just want to hang out with the kids and uh, then you can see me after service and we'd love to get you connected as well. Thanks. Thank you, Jacob. Again, on that announcement page, check out Mom's Group. Boy, that is this Tuesday coming up. Um, this Saturday will be a memorial service for Denise uh, DeBlois. That's Michael's wife, and that's daughter of Dwayne and Kathy Stanky. So please notice that's this Saturday at 10 in the morning. On um, July 30th, th that's the larger paragraph there, uh, we're going to have a uh, bluegrass and gospel group. Uh, Bob, do you know anything about that? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So Bob Usman uh, has this group gathering in his garage, and his garage wasn't available on the 30th, so they figured they'd be here, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you handled that very well. Whatever. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Um, and so we're making it a cookout. Should be a good time. Notice the details there. This week, Shirley Hoffman uh, received news that her husband, who has been uh, in a uh, VA facility and was not well, uh, he had died this week. And so we keep her in our prayers, Shirley Hoffman. And then also, how many of you know who Michael Zugby is? Michael Zugby is our friend from Bethlehem in the Holy Land. And he keeps us supplied with, how many of you know what olive wood carving is? Okay, you know about that. So um, he gave a call and was just letting me know that he would like our prayers because he, he lives in Bethlehem. 
he is severely limited as to where he can go because of government policy. And hopefully this week or next week he will be meeting uh, with government officials to receive a two-year identification so that he can travel more between uh, Jerusalem and Bethlehem. Jerusalem is where his wife lives and his kids live. But also that he might be able to get uh, the therapy he needs for um, getting back to health after being uh, under COVID for four and a half months and uh, in a coma for 45 days. That was, that was about two years ago. So as we think of Michael, we might think of what God might be doing for his health and his freedom. There are, uh, oh, I uh, neglected to mention men's barbecue is coming up the 22nd. That's going to be about five miles east here at the Schmeiser's house. Please notice details. I invite you to turn in your uh, setting for booklet, which is the first thing they should see as you open the covers of your contemporary books. Look to the setting for book, page three. Please stand. We worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. the 
Tortoise can play in the field and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Race for the wind that blows through the trees, the seas by his storms, the gentleness breeze. They blow where they will, they blow where they please. you to turn back to your setting for booklet page three. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The prayer of the day is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I invite the children to come forward. Come on up. Grab a little seat. Why would you grab me one, Tifa? Thank you very much. Come on up. All right, yep, you want to put them right here. Good morning. Go ahead and grab one. Good job. Thank you, Brian. Charlotte, you want to grab a pocket piece, Brian? Good job. All right, yep, yeah, right here. Someone want to sit right here for me? Thank you, Brian. You can sit right there, Charlotte. All right. Well, I brought something with me that I think is super cool. Can you see it? Do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? Bugs. Yeah, they are bugs. This is the lifestyle and the life cycle of a honeybee. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that this was super neat. When I was your age, I was really, really scared of bees. Why do you think I would be scared of bees? Because they would sting me. Yeah, because they would sting me, and I don't want to get stung, right? What's the sound that a bee makes? Buzz. Right? Very good. It wasn't until I was older that I realized 
that because God was so smart and he was so strong that he made bees for a reason. Bees take care of our environment, they help with, with flowers, and what do bees make that's super tasty? Honey. honey. Very good. Bees make honey. In our second reading, in a book that we call Colossians, we find out that God is super smart and he's super strong and he's super powerful, and he uses that to care for, to know, and to love us. That if he cares about things and uses things like these bees, look how teeny tiny they are, and how much more does he care about and love and want to use us to do good too? So let's take a second and let's pray and let's thank God. Can we do that? Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for mom and for dad. Thank you for grandpa and grandma. Thank you for bees the environment, the beautiful flowers, the sweet tasting honey. Thank you that you love us. Help us to love others too. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right, go ahead and put your squares away and then let's head to wake worship. The first lesson is from Genesis 18, starting with verse 1. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if you find favor with me, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourself and after that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened to the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and, and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season. And your wife Sarah shall have a son. The second lesson is from Colossians 1. He is the invisible, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. 
For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of the cross. And you who were once you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled into his fleshy body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which, in, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. This ends the readings. <laughs> Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 10. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Please be seated. Well, I'm thinking that Martha gets to the bad end of the stick. Martha's been working so hard and getting no help, it seems. It was Martha who heard that Jesus and his disciples were in town. And it was Martha who welcomed them, invited them into her home. And Martha works hard to provide for them. And how many guests is she going to have? Well, Jesus and his disciples, which are? Okay, we got 12 plus 1 is? Good. 13. So it's kind of confusing. Why doesn't Jesus acknowledge her work? Why doesn't Jesus support her request for help from her sister Mary? 
And why is it that Jesus defends Mary's inactivity? The fact of it is, Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament tells us there is a time for everything. There's a time to be born, a time to die. There's a time to plant, there's a time to harvest. There's a time to be sad and a time to dance. There's a time to speak, a time to listen. In fact, there's a time to work. There's also a time to rest. And when Jesus is speaking, when Jesus is present, that would be a time to do what? Listen. When Jesus is speaking, it's a time to listen. Or as I've mentioned in the sermon title, to rest in him. And that's our focus today. Last week we focused on doing. Do you remember what Jesus' parable was? Yes, it was the Good Samaritan. So the man comes to Jesus and says, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, what do you read in the scriptures? The man says, love God, love your neighbor. Jesus says, you're right, do this, do this, and you will live. Wishing to justify himself, the man says, but who is my neighbor? Jesus tells the parable of the Good Samaritan. Then he asks the question, which of these three was a neighbor to the man who fell among the thieves? The man says, the one who showed mercy. And Jesus says, do you remember? Say it again. Go and do likewise. Last week was all about responding in compassion, doing. This week is about not doing, of resting, of listening, of being quiet or still. Being attentive to others is what we are called to be, but we can't be attentive to others if we are not attentive to him. And if left on our own devices, our own energy, we will simply run out of time energy, compassion, and patience. And so today, our focus is on being attentive to Him and resting in Him. Now, when Jesus and the disciples come to Mary and Martha's house, I am fully confident that before they have come, Mary and Martha have been working hard together to do all the preparations. Both of them have been working. They have prepared the food, they've cleaned the house, they have fluffed the pillows. And now that the guest has arrived, they have served the food. And it is now as they are eating, maybe as they have finished eating, Jesus begins to speak. And now it's time to do what? To listen. And in fact, it would make sense to listen to him because this is no ordinary guest. We just heard in our second reading who Jesus is. He is an image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn of all creation. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. When this one speaks, it is not time for us to be doing every thing here or there. It is time to listen. Mary is listening. She's attentive. She is sitting at Jesus' feet, drinking it in. And what is Martha doing? She is worried and distracted by her many tasks, literally by her much serving. She reminds me of my mother. By the way, my mother had both of these qualities. She learned to uh, study the scriptures each day. She was faithful in her worship attendance. Uh, she was very good at serving others. But the funny thing was, when my sister and I would sit down at the table uh, just in the middle of the day, 
We'd say, Mom, come sit with us. Come join us. Sit down and talk with us. And so she would sit, and about 15 seconds later, she would pop up and do something else. And we'd say, we, we don't need anything. We're doing just fine. What we want is not something you can provide. We want what? We want you. It's the same thing with Martha. I'm imagining she says, is there anything else I can get you? Certainly you could probably use more pita bread. Would you like a little more wine? What else would you like? And Jesus says, Martha, come and sit. Come and join us. He says to her, Martha, Martha, do you hear his compassion? Martha, Martha, you are anxious and distracted by many things. There is need of only one. Come and sit down and listen to me. Martha, come and rest. It's an invitation. It's permission to stop. To stop what you're doing. To stop what you're distracted with. To stop with what consumes you. And to come and rest in his presence. Permission. Invitation. Come spend some time with the very author of life. Spend some time with the source of peace. Jesus says, come rest in me. Inside each of us is both Mary and Martha. We are called both to work and be productive and responsible, and putting that into perspective, learning to rest in him, to trust in him, and to receive all the good gifts that he would want to pour into us. Work, yes but also rest. Do and be still. So if you would turn to the bullet and insert, there's a lot of words there, but I think it might be a helpful exercise. I've labeled it classic Christian growth. And you'll see the four R's listed on the left, read, reflect, respond, and rest. Classically, for the last five, six hundred years, these have been the disciplines of dedicated Christian people. In Latin, the words are lexio. What does that mean? Read. Yes, you know your Latin well. Reflexio. Yeah, that does not mean stretching exercises. That is uh, reflecting on what you've read. The next one is meditatio. In English, the word would be what? Meditation. But think of respond. And then finally, contemplatio, which in English would be contemplation, but, but we think rest. And so read, reflect, respond, and rest. These are marvelous. It's a marvelous shorthand for what we can do as Christians as we come deeper into our relationship with our Lord and with each other. Look all the way to the right, those two columns. If you think of faith with the Lord as a relationship, we can compare it to various relationships that you have here and now. For instance, an acquaintance, somebody at the grocery store, maybe uh, it's the checkout person, you see every once in a while. And they say, how are you? And your response written here is, you're always fine, right? Why is it that you say fine other than you're not doing terribly? Why is it that you say fine? Because you don't have the time to go into detail. Besides, you don't know the person well enough to be honest. And so with an acquaintance, which is an important person, but you simply don't know them well, if they say, how are you doing, you basically say, fine. It's not that you don't value them, it's simply that you don't know them deeper. But that relationship is important, and all these are. You go a little deeper, and that's a friend. 
And a friend, when they ask you, how are you? You might be a little more honest. Boy, it's been a hard week. It's been kind of stressful. It goes deeper in trust, as you know, and uh, are open to them, from acquaintance to friend. In the same way, if you go a little deeper, for a good friend, if they say, how are you? Chances are you're going to share your struggles with them. It's been a hard week, and this is why. Uh, you'll go into how um, your dog died or you've been um, keeping track of someone in your family and they've been going through a hard thing and so you're caring for them and you're praying for them and uh, much time and energy is going into this. You have the time and the trust to open up to them because you know them and they know you. And now you're sharing how you are this day and this week. And finally, best friend. Here is someone who not only you can be honest with or share your struggles with, this is somebody that you can even sit together or walk together and you don't even need to share words all the time. But you can simply share silence together. You can look at a sunset and you don't have to blab about what color it is. You can simply go, wow and enjoy it together. That's a best friend. Someone who you trust so much you don't even need words to express yourself or explain yourself. You can simply rest in that quality and depth of that relationship. I mention these words on the right because they correspond to the words on the left. Read, reflect, <laughs> read, reflect, respond, and rest. Now I'm going to go to the center. Tell me, in your life of faith, what are some things that you can read? Just give me some. Raise your hand. That way I can, you won't be yelling. What's something you can read? You can read the Bible. Excellent. What else can you read? A devotional book. I just spoke with someone today who is in her 80s, and she mentioned, I read my devotional book every morning. I said, that's terrific. How long have you done that? She says, as long as I can remember. And by the way, she has a good memory. She couldn't even say 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, as long as I can remember. What a great thing to do. We can read the Bible. We can read the devotional book. We might be thinking of a hymn. We might have a prayer, like the Lord's Prayer. These are things that we can look at and take in. Reading is very important. But you also know that we can read or think of something, let's say the Lord's Prayer, and we can say it almost without thinking, right? Sometimes we do that in our worship. We go through and then we just think, what, what did I just say? And so reading is very important, but it's also important to reflect, which is the second one. So think just for a moment. If what we are reflecting on and reading is Psalm 23. So the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie out in green pastures. He leads me by still waters. And we can rattle that off and be done with it and move on during our day. But it may not sink in. And so we reflect on it. The Lord is whose shepherd? My shepherd. Now that word which is on a page, objective, that I'm looking at, all of a sudden comes near and I realize that is true about God in relation to me. Now that begins to make a difference. What does it mean to me? Or what does this mean to the person that I'm concerned about, praying about? My husband, my wife, my daughter, my mom, whoever it might be. And I can say, the Lord is their shepherd, his shepherd, her shepherd. And all of a sudden that connection becomes deeper. 
What does it mean to me, or what might I do with it? Also in uh, Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow, how might I respond? Fear? Show me with your heads. You might, but because the Lord is my shepherd, how can I respond? I don't have to be afraid because you are with me. We go from simply reading now to reflecting. What does that mean for me? What does that mean for the one that I care about? And we begin to go deeper. Then we respond. What do I do with that? In the sense of the 23rd Psalm, if the Lord is my shepherd, then I don't need to be afraid. Then my response to a difficulty, to something frightening, is I am not alone. This changes my reality. It changes how I respond. It changes what I do. I'm remembering when I was in college praying for my grandma. She had been a widow for 15 years. She was not always the happiest camper. And so, by the way, my prayers were not always the deepest. I would pray, now I lay me down to sleep, even in college. And then I had a very long list of God bless, and then whoever. And Grandma was on that list. And when I got to Grandma, I thought, she is lonely. She is just kind of not always really happy. Lord, would you send someone to her? And I prayed this over and over again. What did I finally realize? Call her. <laughs> it doesn't take a rocket scientist to be thinking, praying of my grandma, knowing that she was lonely. Hmm. Hmm. Finally, it occurred to me, call her. We read, we reflect, but we also respond, sometime in action, picking up a phone and calling, but also responding in different ways. I will not be afraid, for you are with me. Your rod, staff, they comfort me. Last week we heard about the response when we see someone in need by the roadside. What does the Good Samaritan do? He helps. He responds. He does. Our society rewards activity. It rewards creativity. It rewards people who see some, see a need and respond to it, who do something rather than just sitting there. What we don't value a lot is the last one. Read, reflect, respond, rest. Somehow, down deep inside, I believe that most of us have a little motor running. And that motor is powered by our belief that what we do gives us value. That if we're just sitting, then we have no productive value. As my dad used to say to me, don't just sit there, do something. I have to reverse that now, especially if I'm praying, because Sometimes when I'm praying, I have this great compulsion to get up and simply, what? Do something. And yet, as I am praying, I am doing the most important thing one could do. And I am spending time with the most important person there is. I remember earlier in my life, I'd be praying, and the phone would ring. What would I do? Answer the phone. Who was it? A screen door salesman. So what I finally realized was when I am praying and the phone rings, I am not answering it because I am already talking to the most important person in the world. Whoever that is, I'm sure can wait. But we have this compulsion when we're sitting to think, I really should be doing because it defines me. What we are learning as God's children is that we are not human doings. What are we? Yeah. Human beings. 
We are valuable not because of what we accomplish, but because who we are and who we belong to. And it's our time with Him that reinforces who you are, why you are valuable, why you are loved. You are not loved because you are so talented. You're not loved because you're so smart. You are not loved because you get so much accomplished. You are loved because the one who created you cherishes you. Period. And so we read, we reflect, we respond. That can be responding in action. It also can be responding, oh, let's say with... Uh, with a response that is kind of inside. I have listed there Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. That's actually the response. And the reason comes in the third or fourth verse. Because the Lord is good. And because the Lord is good, that's why we make a joyful noise to the Lord. Our thanks is a response. Our sense of peace might be a response. I've mentioned two psalms in relation to rest. And that rest isn't simply a vacation. Although I often think of my time of prayer morning and evening as a mini vacation. It's a time where I get to sit in the lap of my Heavenly Father and I don't have to be responsible. I can be like Martha, realizing that the table is set, the pillows have been fluffed, everything necessary has been done, and now it's time to simply be in his presence, to be still and know that he is God. That is Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know. But my head is going a thousand miles an hour. That's fine, the Lord says. Just spend some time in my presence. Let me see if I could pour a little peace into you and let you separate your lists of what needs to get done from this moment in my presence. Psalm 131 says it another way. Lord, I have calmed and quieted my soul like a child in its mother's arms, like a child on its father's lap. I have calmed and quieted my soul in your presence. Be still and know. I am just as likely to you as you in a time of prayer to be tempted to fill that time with my words. And those words are valuable and they're helpful. But there's also a time simply to rest, to be, to notice, to go, wow, and to be like a child held in the most safe, wondrous, caring person's arms, to rest in him. Over and over, we are encouraged to believe that we are human doings, that our worth, our value is dependent on how much we produce, how busy we are. By the way, whenever someone says, how are you? How often do you say, oh, I'm busy? <laughs> Number one, it's because it's probably true. I believe the second and maybe most profound reason is we believe that if we're busy, then we're okay. What happens as we begin to learn that that's not necessarily true? That that we are worthwhile because we belong to the one who has created everything and loves us just the way we are. He calls us to respond to each other. He calls us to love him and others. But finally, we are loved because he loves us. So last week we heard about the Good Samaritan. Love God, 
love one another. We hear this Samaritan which responds to someone in need, and Jesus says, yes, go do likewise. That's a big reason why you are here on earth. But this week, we also hear the kind of balance to that. There is a time not to be doing, but actually to being. Not being active, responding, but there is a time simply to be still and know and to rest in Him. You see, Mary and Martha are the rhythm of life. It's like breathing. Try just breathing one way. Just breathe out. And pretty soon you'll be compelled to breathe in. And in the same way, doing and resting, speaking and listening, working and being still, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. Be still, the Lord invites us. And finally, he simply says, Be, for you are my children, loved, guided, watched over, cared for. Rest, the permission, is rest in him. Amen.
often we need a little help to be peaceful. We need permission, like being together in a group and singing a song about peace. Then we can sit still. Then we can enter into it. It's sometimes difficult to do it alone. With practice, it helps. Always knowing that he is the one who invites us into his presence to rest. I invite you to turn to page seven in your setting for booklet. And we confess our faith in this one who has made us and all things. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, there is no question that you have made us to be active. You have made us to work. You have given us eyes and ears, hands and feet, and you intend for us to use them. Not only that we could support ourselves, but that we could support others. That like the good Samaritan, we can see those in need and reach out a hand to help. You have also made us to be in relation to you. And that also means learning to know you, to trust you, and even learning to rest in you. Lord, don't give up on us. So often we are like Martha, anxious and distracted by many things. And you say to us, finally, there is need of only one thing need of only one and that you say is me lord help us to trust what you say that you care for us value us love us just for who we are not for what we do what we do flows out of who we are as your own children and so help us to put our lives into your hands, to rest in you, in your goodness, in your protection, in your provision, in your care. Help us to live our lives trusting you more and more each moment each day. Let our lives of worship and prayer permeate everything that we do and think and say. Remind us that you say, be still and know that I am God, Lord in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, we live in a world that doesn't know that, that believes quite the opposite, that you don't exist, or that you do exist, but our, our job is to do and think and accomplish everything. 
Lord, you seem to be quite adept at answering any question, any prayer, or any need. And most often, you invite us to be a part of that answer. But help us be open to you in discerning how we might respond, with whom, and when, and where always trusting you will provide. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Didi, our missionary. You would continue to give them guidance and strength as they serve in the Congo of Africa. Keep your hand upon his wife, Serafina, as she recovers from her stroke and gains the use of her leg and arm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Shirley in her grief, that you would surround her with your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our And we pray for Sadie, for Sue, for Electa and Jan, for Haldi, for Dave and Tom, Martin. Duane, and for all we mention silently in our heart. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace with one another. Yeah.
setting for a booklet. The offering prayer is written there. Please stand. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. reasons we gather to worship together is that we hold each other accountable. Somehow it can be easier waiting in silence if you know everyone else's. And then we can learn to do the same in our own lives with him. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world. You gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have life eternal. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith, as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, remembering me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this, remembering me. We pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Next week, we will hear how Jesus gave to us the Lord's, or the Lord's Prayer. body of Christ broken for you. As we commune this morning, we will take this section first. You'll come along here. When you have uh, received the wine, you may simply turn around and go back. Uh, everyone else will come through this way, come around toward the sidewalk, and then make a big circle. Got it? Good. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. We pray in your mercy you would strengthen us in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sí.
sing loud and strong, not enslaved but set free. From now on all will be one in Jesus, one in water, baptized and set free. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.